Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Jackie Alnor coming to you from outside the camp. Today we want to examine the ministry of Sid Roth. He's the host of a program called It's Supernatural. It would appear that whatever can't be explained in the natural and appears to be benevolent, then Sid thinks it's of God. He has zero discernment. He tests absolutely nothing. The expressions on his face when he hears wild, unbiblical stories of signs and wonders that truly are lying signs and wonders, his face just lights up because he loves chasing after signs and wonders. And you know what our Lord Jesus said. It is a wicked generation that seeks after a sign. And that's what this man's life has been all about. Now we are warned that the devil disguises himself as an angel of light and that it should be no surprise when his ministers disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness. And Sid Roth cannot see through the disguise and perhaps it's because he himself is disguised as a minister of righteousness when he is anything but that. In fact, he is the Jerry Springer of Christian television and it is a blot on the body of Christ, especially when the onlooking world sees us all as a bunch of foolish, naive people who believe anything and test nothing. Well, let's see him in action. And just by narrowing our focus on his promotion of lying signs and wonders, it will give us an overview of where this man is coming from and why he needs to be excluded from the circles of born-again true saints. We'll start with his testimony given to false teacher Catherine Kuhlman back in 1972 when he was a younger man. In this video that we start off with, we'll demonstrate how though he was involved in the occult because he was seeking the supernatural, he only changed the direction in which he was seeking those very things. I know that these clips are not the whole interview in context, but in it, he said nothing of repenting from sin and becoming born again by renouncing all of these things and dying to self. We hear none of that. So I just captured the essence of what he was saying. And we'll see nothing really changed. He just put a Christian facade on what he was already doing. Oh, we're going to have the greatest time today. When I tell you that the name of my guest is Sid Roth, that's thrilling in itself. <laughs> Fortunately for me, God knew my heart, and he put me in a position. Uh, I, I, I began to believe that the man, the individual, can do anything. And so what God did is he backed me into a corner, stripped me of everything. He got me involved in the psychic world. And uh, I didn't realize I was tying in with the devil when I was involved in astrology and in uh, mind control activities. How did you ever get involved with that? I was looking for power. Uh, I found a power there. I found that astrology isn't fake. It works. It works. You like to explore the unknown. I, I was looking for power and I found sure. it. And then God had a few other things happen within the occult to me. For instance, I, I remember one day I was in a seance type meeting and I had my eyes closed and all of a sudden I saw something come out of my body and it was me. And I told the lady next to me and she says, oh, that's terrific. That's your astral soul that has just come out of your body. But be very careful because sometimes when you're new at this, your astral soul won't find its way back into your body. And this scared the heck out of me. <laughs> and so now here, my soul's going out of my body. I don't know it. I may wake up and my, my soul won't be back in. And I'm really worried at this point. And then I get a hold of a book, which the Lord uh, gave to me. I went into a bookstore to get some books on psychic phenomena. And I saw one book called The Bible, The Jew, and The Supernatural. Didn't know a thing about it, but you know, I was interested in, in I was Jewish and in the supernatural. And Sid Roth, today, you're a better Jew than you've ever been in your life. Someone started flying in my guest's meeting. 
I mean, he flew out the door. And he says, we haven't seen anything yet. Are you ready? So, an atheist comes into one of your meetings. <laughs> I uh, used to do a youth camp up in the mountains outside of Seattle. One young man came and he said, okay, God, if you're real, have somebody fly tonight. And so and in the meeting, a young man who actually had a halo on, because he had just had surgery on his brain, literally picked up. I mean, I've heard of fleeces. I read about Gideon in the Bible, but <laughs> Gideon didn't know what a fleece was. Flew out, the, out down the hall, the door swung open. He flew over the parking lot and landed in the snow. So needless to say, the atheist is no longer an atheist. I believe that this may even become common when the glory really hits us. Yeah, I believe that. I believe uh, we haven't seen anything yet. You know, Andre, uh, you were mentored by someone who's now in heaven and had, was a guest on my television show, Jill Austin. Tell me a few of the manifestations that occurred with her. Major one that sticks out in my mind is a young man who was rather rebellious. I came to one of Jill's meetings and his friends asked him, oh, hey. oh, aren't you afraid to go to this meeting? And she goes, no, I've been around Bob Jones, Paul Kane, nothing ever happens to me. So when he walks into the room, he said two huge hands grabbed him around the waist, whispered in his ear and said, I thought you said nothing ever happens to you and slams him to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> And for three hours, he's wrestling with the an angel. And you can literally see this happening because he would try to crawl away and it would pull him back. A blue, visible mist of God's glory comes into my guests' meetings. Are you ready for the blue mist? And on Sunday morning, the blue mist, my mother was praying, my grandmother was praying for me. The blue mist rolled into my hospital room, rolled into the room. Yeah, it's so powerful, the, so powerful. Knocked my mother to the floor on one side, knocked my grandmother to the floor on the other side, out in the Holy Ghost, as I would say, out in the Holy Ghost of God. And Jesus walked right up to my bed. Um, he came out of the blue mist, right up in the smoke. Wait, were you afraid? I mean, you're a young kid. You're dying. I'm but... setting up, a 10 year old sat in the bed looking up and there's Jesus in front of me that I've been taught all my life about Jesus. Now I'm looking right at him. Beautiful eyes, beautiful. Uh, and I received a brand new liver in one second by the power of God. Give God praise. Hey, hallelujah. My guest doesn't have just one healing angel. She has seven healing angels that travel with her wherever she goes and tells her what to pray. Even healings take place. Like at a meeting she was at, there were a hundred people instantly healed of arthritis. Wanted to pray for you. <laughs> Tell me about how they operate with you, these healing angels. Um, one of the pastors came up to me and he said, Becky, do you know you have an angel that you follows you wherever you go? You. And I said, yes, I do, because people because see him. And he said, you actually have seven. And, and he said, the six follow the one. He says, do you know what the angel does? And I said, tell me, what does my angel do? And he said, well, he has this little book and he reads from his book into your ear. And after after he's done saying what, what he's reading from his book, you then repeat what he says. Okay, well, we know that angels do not heal anybody. Healing, according to the New Testament, is a gift of the Holy Spirit. 
The, only the Holy Spirit is required in healing. Never anywhere in Old or New Testament do angels heal anybody. God heals. Angels do not. And again, it's a falsehood that Sid Roth is promoting these liars and these dreamers as if they were real when they're not to be listened to. Angels are God's messengers. And we see them in the Bible when they have a message from the Lord to give to one of his people, particularly in the Old Testament, but certainly in the Gospels of the launching of the New Covenant. And we see where the Lord has used angels as a shield about us to protect us from our invisible enemies, the fallen angels. As a matter of fact, the Archangel Michael wrestled with the devil over the body of Moses. In other places in the Old Testament, they were seen with swords about to wreak vengeance on behalf of God. But never do they heal people. In fact, that's, that's a falsehood. That's a fairy tale. And that's part of people turning their ears away from hearing the truth and turning into fables and mythology because that's all it is. Now, the other problem that we saw here was really even more evil. And that was poltergeist activity going on in the church in the name of God that wasn't of God at all. And they're saying, well, you haven't seen anything yet. Like they're expecting this next big outpouring to include all these miraculous signs and wonders, which are really lying signs and wonders. And since they're prophesied to happen in the end times, don't be surprised if they do. In fact, the kid levitating, levitation is particularly seen in the occult. And the, the lying prophets will say, well, you know, look, look at Elijah, you know, that was lifted up and, and, you know, put in the chariot of fire and brought up into heaven. And, you know, they'll point to things like that, the unusual things that God has done. Well, that wasn't levitation. That was God catching him up. It was more of a type of the rapture, but not a type of your everyday metaphysical behavior that you'll see with the swamis in India. Okay, <laughs> that doesn't happen in the church. It, it does with the so-called mystics who were really blanking out their minds and doing Eastern practices, the type of, of mind emptying meditations, again, that comes from Hinduism. They might as well be bringing up pythons up out of a basket. And since when does some invisible hands grab a hold of somebody and drag them across the room and people say, oh, wow, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? No, that's not wonderful. That's wickedness. That's evil. And it's ungodly and it's unclean. And that is the workings of the unclean spirit that Zechariah prophesied that at the end they will be removed from the earth. So Sid engaged in seeking after these powers. He sought a more acceptable form of these lying signs and wonders. And that's what he chases after. And that's what he tries to present the church as if it's true. So these things are so obvious to us with the slightest mustard seed of discernment. Why is it that so-called leaders in the church will go along with this man, will go on their show, will sit there and talk to him like they are all in one accord? Are they one in accord with a guy who is a messenger of the devil? Because that's what they're doing. And if you see your favorite prophecy teacher getting on this show, shut him up. He is not hearing from the Lord. Anything that he's chasing after, be it UFOs or Nephilim, don't listen to him because he is not hearing from God. He couldn't be hearing from God because he would be exposing these wicked men and these false testimonies and these lying signs and wonders. He would be exposing that if he had any discernment at all. So don't trust him or her, whoever it might be. Because if they would participate in ministry with this man, then they are not to be trusted with anything, spiritually speaking. Stay away from them. Don't support their ministries. They're out there to scratch itching ears. And that's all. So anyway, if I, if I seem a little excited about some of this stuff, I am. I'm very angry because these are things perpetrated against the body of Christ. And that means that they're hurting many people, especially young converts who aren't grounded in the word of God and, 
and they're believing these men because they trust them because they've been Christians longer than me, so shouldn't I trust them? Well, you know what Jesus thinks of them. Look around for a millstone. Well, on that awful note, (laughs) I'm sorry to have to be the ones to present this to you if you are just so excited about Sid Roth's show. But he's the obvious one. And there's so many more deceivers out there who do a little sleight of hand, but they're a little bit trickier with it. The devil is cunning, and he is out to deceive many. And do not follow after them. Stay in the word of God. Yes, the Lord speaks to us. Particularly, he speaks to us through his word. But the word that he gave us has meaning within its context. You can't just take something out of context and say, well, that's of God, if it, has, if it doesn't apply or if it's not a principle that can be applied to your life. I know my friend Johanna Michelson was always fond of saying, you can prove anything from the Bible taken out of context. She would say, well, God loves cats and hates dogs. And, we, they, and people would say, oh, come on, how can that be? You can't prove that from Scripture. And she's, well, I I certainly can. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, so obviously he loves cats, even big cats. But we're also told that outside are the dogs and the sorcerers. A little humor to apply to something that isn't really funny. But we're going to see more of these deceptions as we get closer to that day, and it is coming. So got to Put your discernment ears on. Keep those antenna up. And until next time, keep on the lookout.